Hi everyone, my name is John Dunn. Uh, I'm with AWR and what I'd like to talk about today is some of the features of our EM socket. The idea of the EM socket is it's a complete environment for creating your EM projects. Now first of all, of course, uh, you have to be able to draw and I'll show you that in a second. Second of all, you uh, want to be able to do things like control various libraries or PDKs, uh, have access to those libraries, and you want to be able to simulate with different electromagnetic simulators. So let me illustrate some of this with this simple example. What you see before you here is a uh, connector attached to a line on a board, and you can see the center pin of the connector right here where my cursor is, comes out to this microstrip line on a board, and then we go onto a module, this is a quad flat no lead module, bond wire over to a gallium arsenide chip, and then uh, the connection would be the signal would come up the middle bond wire would come back on the two side grounds here, the two side ground bond, bond wires, back down onto these lines here and back out on the board to the board ground uh, via the two uh, ground vias where my cursor is right here. This is a fairly typical uh, type of signal integrity problem uh, that EM people would want to simulate and of course then optimize the performance of this uh, uh, interconnect structure. Uh, instantly the connector looks a little strange here. It is a standard SMA connector, uh, but what I've done is I've made the barrel length uh, here at port one zero length, so it looks like there's there's no barrel, but you can see the port there. Uh, it's irrelevant for the simulation of the barrel length. Okay, um, so first of all, notice uh, how I drew this. Uh, obviously, I drew the 2D shapes uh, in various ways. As a matter of fact, I used uh, P-cells. I used M-Lens, if you're familiar with our software, to make the lines, so I actually didn't need to redraw them. I also used library elements. The connector is made with a 3D library element. This is a pre-configured uh, element. And we have a number of these that are controlled by parameters, so I can change the... Uh, various uh, sizes and shapes of the connector. We have several of these elements and you can just go ahead and use them. Instantly as an aside, although I won't show it today, uh, you can make your own 3D elements using a 3D editor, uh, which many of you with uh, 3D EM tools are, are probably used to using. Now, uh, also the module is pre-configured. Uh, it's another element. Uh, the chip, I did go ahead and put a few pads uh, on the chip and then I used bond wires uh, to complete uh, the, the layout. I can't show it here uh, in the interest of time, but I actually can draw this entire structure in five minutes um, because of the pre-configured elements. Notice over here on the left where my cursor is right now, we're doing the project here, Analyst, our 3 d EM simulator, finite element simulator. And notice you'll see we have analyst with connector where my cursor is. That's what you're viewing right now. But then notice you see QFN 5x5. This is the quad flat pack package. It's down a level in hierarchy. And actually then within this, you can see here uh, we uh, then have the chip. So what we've got going on here, here's the chip right here, the IC gallium arsenide chip. We have different levels of hierarchy, and the power of this is you can use different PDKs, different libraries. So we have a gallium arsenide library, we have an LTCC kind of module library, and we also have the board Duroid library. We're using all three, we're keeping them separate by using hierarchy, again, which you can see here, uh, on the left. Uh, ports are added in the normal way and let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things we can do here. I'll show you the answer of course in a minute. If I hit this annotation, what you're seeing here in 3D with the different colors, we're showing the meshes that hit metal 
and we're coloring those according to their DC connectivity. So I basically can see if this thing is connected correctly very quickly. Uh, notice again the line is purple, the ground is green, so if we zoom in for example on the uh, coax of the connector you can see that indeed it is uh, connected properly. Let's take a look at the answer. Uh, this took about six minutes to run in Analyst and we'll take a quick look here. And here are the results. I'm showing you the S11 uh, over here and the S21 over here with Analyst with and without the connectors. So that accounts for four of these curves. In a nutshell, the connector has very little uh, effect on the performance. Uh, quite frankly, uh, this response is horrible uh, for this package. We have a huge resonance and anyone who works in real package design uh, would appreciate we need far more gr uh, better grounding of the package. We only have those two uh, vias uh, to the board ground and you'll get much better response. Of course I deliberately made the response fairly poor to illustrate the point. Incidentally I've also simulated this with HFSS uh, we do have a link to HFSS. We have one to CST and we have one to Sonnet. And basically it's the exact same drawing I just showed you. It goes out to HFSS and the data comes back in. I'm showing those cu curves too. Uh, they do agree with the analyst as we would hope. Um, so we support a number of 3D simulators besides our own analyst. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks very much. Bye.